This episode of Storytellers is brought to you by these fine companies. I'm Jim Overhoffer, and you're watching Storytellers on Competition Plus TV. Well, we're in, um, in, in Brainerd, Minnesota, and um, I think this was in, uh, in the late 90s. And, um, you know, so we were, we went down there to partake in the fun, uh, kind of like old downtown Brainerd. And it was um, myself, Jim Becker, who, who worked for us at Coletta's at the time. Uh, Mike Googer was there. Um, and uh, Mike Austin, Pat Austin's brother Mike. And so we're just down there, you know, we go to the Blue Ox, we're gonna have some fun and just have a couple of beers because that's what we all did back then, right? And, um, you know, I was a new dad at the time. My daughter, Ashley, she was just a couple of years old at the time. So we go to the Blue Ox and we're having a good time. And then we decide that we're gonna go to the, the next bar down the street. And um, all of a sudden, we're walking down there, and out of the blue, this guy just comes and runs right into Mike Austin. And, and Mike, everybody who knows Mike, Mike don't take any, uh, any uh, crap from anybody, right? So he, he got in this guy's face, and next thing, you know, trying to find out what his problem is, and next thing you know, this guy, like, goes and hits him for no reason and takes off running. This guy was like a big, tall guy. Like he wasn't big, but he was like tall and lanky and, and he was on something, something wasn't right. So anyway, Mike's pissed. We're like trying to calm Mike down. Hey dude, don't worry about it. Just let's just move on, right? Go to the bar and have some fun. So, you know, Mike, he was, he was pretty irate at the time. And we go into this next bar and there's like an entryway into this bar and uh, we walk in and it's not a very big area at all that you're in. It's like, you know, you go in and then you walk into another door to get into the bar. And lo and behold, this guy that cheap shot Mike basically, he's in there and Mike sees him and Mike goes, he's like, I'm gonna get me a piece of this guy, right? Well. It took everybody in a place to hold Mike back. And then I had the tall lanky guy and I just was holding him back. And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, this guy's trying to like knee me in the, uh, knee me in the no, no land. And uh, I'm like, well, screw this. So I t took his head and I just smashed it up against the the wall, which happened to be concrete, uh, like a cinder block wall. And he goes sliding down the wall and there's blood, cause it's a white wall and there's blood. And I'm like, oh shit, I think I just killed this guy. And he's on the ground. And the next thing you know, everybody's like sitting there and Mike Googer, the look on his face was all time uh, because he had glasses on and they were all crooked. And Mike was like, what the hell, I'm Becker. It was just like, what did you do? And you could hear a pin drop in this place, right? And I'm like, oh man. About that time, this big bouncer comes out. What's going on? And this guy's laying on the ground and I'm thinking to myself, oh man, I'm, in, I'm going to jail. You know, I'm, I just killed somebody. My, <laughs> my daughter's gonna have to come visit me in the jail and all this. I said, this is not, not real smooth, right? So, all of a sudden, this guy jumps up off the ground and takes off running. So, about that time, the bouncer goes chasing him. The cops had pulled up at that time. They go chasing this guy. They tackle him. They put cuffs on him, throw him in the back of the car. And I'm like, I walk out and I'm like, I gotta get out of here like before I get in trouble. And the guy's in the back, he's in handcuffs and he's like trying to tell the cops he can't point at, at me, but he's trying to tell them that, that I assaulted him or whatever. And uh, I just said, I'm out of here. I go, Becker, let's go. And we got out of there. And uh, they hauled that guy off. 
to jail, I guess. And uh, I don't know what happened afterwards, but the next day I remember going out to the track and um, of course the ace, you know, I was working, the ace was our crew chief at the time. And anybody who knows the ace, he's the ultimate badass of NHRA drag racing history, in my opinion. And um, him and Connie, who same thing, another ultimate badass of drag racing in, in the fighting world. They come up and they're like, hey, what'd you do last night? I, I go, nothing. Well, that's not what we heard. So, and Ace, you know, he's one of those guys, he's like, with that finger of his, come over here. <laughs> so I told him what the story was. And, and um, I don't know if they were like impressed or not, or, or uh, because I think they've probably done worse <laughs> in their days. But um, I always got a good that -a boy from Ace every now and then on some of the, 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 the stuff that we did. So that made me feel pretty good over the years.